Warm greetings from the High Ten. It is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. I would like to talk about um, the death of Breonna Taylor. Um, I just got through reading, um, done with reading, the Tatum Report. It is a report of phone conversations in the jail, in the Louisville jail, with Glover, her ex-boyfriend, and his mother, and different people. And... Um, I came about this report because I had made commentary on another YouTuber's channel where this one person was going back and forth with me trying to explain what was going on with Brianna and who said what and what was going on in her life and this and that. And I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to check out of here. First of all, let me say this. We are all flawed people. That's first and foremost. We will do wrong in life we will say the wrong things mean things do mean things maybe even take a person's life that's the spoken word no one is perfect and no one is exempt from being a wrongdoer or foul that's just common sense everything in life is about perception what i see you don't see what i hear you don't hear and that's what's going on right now pertaining to this child's death, this young lady's death, same thing with George Floyd. We live in a racist society where it doesn't really matter if African American people talk about any given subject, they are deemed wrong. We are deemed the underdog. So no matter what we decide to fight for in life, be it Black Lives Matter, Black on Black crime, injustices, not fair housing, not fair jobs. It doesn't matter. So long as a black person is speaking, there is a problem. And let's, I just want to be honest about that. With all the negative comments I have seen white people saying ugly and derogatory statements about African American people, it sickens me. But I'm not surprised because this is the world that we live in. Now with this woman's case, this death of Breonna Taylor, there are a lot of black people jumping on the bandwagon saying ugly things about this girl's death. That what? She deserved to be murdered in her own house. She hung with dope dealers. She was keeping... The stash in her home. She was keeping the drugs in her home. Yeah, the queen's going there. Because some of you probably haven't heard this. So I'm going to bring it to you. If you want to get the 411, which was relayed to me through the Tatum report of the jailhouse conversations, please go look it up. Because it's it is an interesting read. And I'm glad the person sent me to that. Because in the same breath, you're trying to put all the blame on her for hanging with drug dealers. Most of the conversation in that report through the jailhouse records with the ex-boyfriend Glover, his mama, his other baby mama. One thing I picked up in all those conversations with his friends, associates, they all said the same thing. Why did the Louisville police go to Brianna Taylor's home to execute a search warrant? And do you know what I got from that? You know what I got from that? Those Questions from those said guys who were incarcerated, having a conversation with Mr. Glover. They were alluding to the fact that she didn't keep no dope in her house. So why the hell were they going there? You see where I'm going? The police followed Mr. Glover to her home, I'm sure on occasions, while they were investigating him for trafficking narcotics. They were watching the trap houses that he had on two different streets in Louisville. And so happened that their investigation took them to Brianna's house. So they also assumed she was in on the game. I'm not going to say she didn't know what he was doing because obviously she kept money there because that conversation came up in jailhouse conversations that, that I just read. But what I will say is this. It was obvious from one of her conversations with Mr. Glover the first of the year that she had moved on from him. So that means... She wasn't messing around with him. And he made that clear to others in his conversations. That he hadn't messed around with the girl. Seen her in two months. Dealt with her. Two months. Yeah, that's obvious from Mr. Kenneth Walker shooting the police from her apartment. Because that's another man. That's not the ex. And that ain't the guy who she's been keeping money. Alleged dope. For. Yah, yah, yah. You see. There is a law that some of you don't even know about. When a person receives mail at an address for one month, they have been deemed to live there. 
They don't actually have to physically be there. But because their mail goes there, then they are deemed to be a resident of that said address. So that can go two ways. Something goes down with the said person, such as a warrant, they can come to that address because they have gotten mail there. They applied for something and used that address, such as a job, public assistance, whatever. So the police knows where to go. So they think. The flip side of that is if you had someone living with you or you let them use the address. Mail's been going there a month. They stayed there. You want to put them out? Well, you can't by law. You have to go to court. As we learned in Detroit, it's a civil matter. Such as someone squatting in your home. You all, you hope you all are following me. Someone can walk in your house, take over your house, stay in your house. In Michigan, they can stay there for however long they want. You have to take them to court to get them out. Even if they illegally broke in your house, wired up, electricity, yah, yah, yah. The point I'm trying to make is... Because a person's address is on a document does not mean they actually physically live there. People use other people's addresses for many reasons, such as one, they don't have a residence of their own. Two, they've got business that they don't want nobody to know about, so they use your address. Do you see what I'm saying? Glover and Brianna were not dating at the time of the shooting at her home. And you will learn that just from looking at the documents on the Tatum report and the phone conversations. As I state, I'm not trying to say she didn't know what he was doing. Nine times out of ten, of course she knew what he was doing. But there was no verification, no sound proof that she actually was manufacturing drugs out of that apartment. For those who want to say it's true, in this jailhouse conversation, Mr. Glover lets it be known that he used her address for his banking and to order things offline. Another young lady made that comment on one of the other YouTubers page saying the only proof they ever found is that she received some mail through Amazon. And it was, we now learn, a hoodie that Mr. Glover ordered. And he went there and picked up the said UPS package, which the police is verifying in there surveillance that he walked out of her home shortly after going there and came out with a UPS package. We now know that it wasn't drugs from his own conversation in jail. He ordered a sweatshirt. But you see, the police is eyeing these guys, Mr. Glover, trailing him to Brianna's home. See, he went in, came out with a package and naturally assumed it was drugs and it wasn't. Listening to Brianna's conversation with Glover led me to think they weren't dating. I'll tell you why. One, I'm a woman. Two, when a guy says, maybe I can come rest up at your house, that led me to know they weren't dating. Why would a guy need to rest up at your house if he's dating you, if he stays with you, if he visits frequently? Her response to that was, she called him by his name. And that's when I said, they're not dating each other. They may have dated in the past, but they weren't dating currently. First of the year, weren't dating in March when the search warrant was, the no-knock was executed. And she got shot when police returned fire from Kenneth Walker's gun. In the said commentary, jailhouse conversation, Walker doesn't seem to be talking about he shot, that Brianna shot anybody. It seems like he's basically saying that. Other reports have said he's, that was his uh, commentary. He was the one that shot at the police. Brianna heard someone knocking at the door. No one answered. That's what was circling around this gossip in the jail. And we know that that's when people let their guard down is in jail and gives the 411. So I'm going to ride with the fact that the police went to her home with the no-knock order. They did not identify themselves. This is my assumption. That is the reason why she was standing in the hallway, probably saying, who is it? Who is it? They bust the door down. He had already went and got his gun, Mr. Walker. Shoot at the police. They return fire. and Shoot at Miss Brianna Taylor. I didn't even know she was shot in the head two times. 
But that's what was said in his jailhouse conversations with Mr. Glover and said parties. You see, we know that if you hang around the wrong people, that anything can happen to you. That if you get in the wrong car, you can be pulled over. If the car doesn't have adequate tail lights, the driver isn't driving properly, they have guns in there, open containers, drugs, paraphernalia, you get my drift. Now you're in a situation that you didn't sign up for. So one can always say, well, you should know your friends. You should know the people you hang around. This is true. But if I don't know that you get down like that, if I don't know you have a drug problem, then I blindly get in your car and you give me a ride somewhere or take me out and then we get pulled over, then there's a search. So then now how's it my fault? You see where I'm going with this? One could say, well, you know they get down like this. You shouldn't go in their house. You shouldn't be friends with them. This is true. But we all know that people don't cut off their friends and associates because they are alcoholics, drug addicts, sell drugs. A mother may know her child sells drugs, but she still will go to his house to visit, still take him money or pick up money from him or take food to his home, her home. You see where I'm going. We as people make mistakes every day. We take up with people who don't mean us any good, participate in illegal activity. We may go ahead and join the bandwagon and also go along with it. And yes, it is our responsibility to stand account for doing said deeds. But to just constantly, in this situation and so many others pertaining to this case, George Floyd, and so many others pertaining to African-American people, I'm sick of hearing these people getting the blame and they are deceased. I'm sick of hearing the nasty things said about the girl wasn't an EMT. I don't care what she was doing. I don't care if she was painting her toenails that night. Painting her toenails on the job that someone said she was sleeping on and got fired from as an EMT. You see, I don't know anything about Breonna Taylor. I don't know anything about what she did on her job. I don't know what type of parent she was. I don't know any of this type of stuff. I don't know any of this. But what I am saying to you all today is that she dated someone who sold drugs. She kept money for him. Maybe at one time she did keep drugs in her house. But I believe at the time of her death, she was not currently dating Glover. She was not keeping drugs or trafficking drugs out of her home for him. The fact that she made comments that she worried about him and that she was worried about something happening to him because of his lifestyle. I could see that she was trying to distance herself from him and his lifestyle. And that is the reason why she had another man, Mr. Kenneth Walker, in her said home on the night of the search warrant and shooting. I believe that because you see what you say to people when you don't think people are listening or care to listen or listening, you usually tell the truth. And I could tell in her conversations to Glover in the jail the first of the year that she dealt with him, but she had moved on. Now, in this jailhouse conversation, you will hear that Glover and others believe that Kenneth Walker is the reason that Brianna is dead. They feel like he shouldn't have shot at the police, that he knew better. Why shoot back? But as Glover's baby mama said, well, think about that situation. What if I was in the house with my kids and someone was breaking down the door? I don't know who it is. Don't I have the right to defend myself? And she's telling the truth. So you see, perception is what is keeping this case and the gossip going on and on. Some want to say it's Kenneth's fault for shooting at the police. Some want to say it's her fault for hanging with a dope dealer, dating a dope dealer, letting him use her address for his banking, his personal business, ordering, you know, items off online. What is the truth? What is myth? And what is gossip? As I state, we are all human. We are all flawed. She got hung up with this guy at some point in life. She let him use her address, which that was revealed in the conversations that perhaps that is why the police knew of her because of the car she drove. He was in her car. 
he rented a car. She rented a car and he drove, which was a murder took place back in 2018. So they feel like that is the reason why the police knew of her anyway. Because of that said car, a dead guy was found in a said rental car in Brianna Taylor's name, which was back in 2000, I think, 18, 2016 or so. But the point is, most of the people in the conversation in this Tatum report basically allude to the fact that they did not understand why the police was at her house executing a warrant, which tells me they did not believe dope was ever at her home. So why the hell were the police there? And that speaks volumes for those of you who think drugs was in her house. Allegedly drugs were not found. She was just letting Mr. Glover use her address for Personal business, such as his banking, obviously probably had a phone that he used in her name. That happens with a lot of young men. They get phones in their girlfriend's wife's name. I see it every day. That's nothing new to me. And there's no crime in that. And I'm not trying to sit here and talk bad about a dead person because I don't know her. And I would be a hypocrite if I acted as if I've never did anything wrong, never did anything I didn't have any business doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to be that honest in this commentary today. But I honestly believe she wasn't keeping anything in his house such as drugs. Now, perhaps his money? Yes. Because it was alluded that she had some of his money. But he basically let it be known, Glover, that she didn't keep no drugs there he didn't give her no drugs to keep there so that's why he and others were stunned that a warrant was executed and that they were even searching her home that's really my message today is that blaming people for their own death because they hung around the wrong kind of people but that's the point we are people and we make mistakes and yes we know I'll say it you hang around the wrong kind of people, nine times out of ten, you will be in some type of trauma. You will be in some type of drama. You hang with people that get down dirty, using guns, stealing, robbing, selling drugs, using drugs, alcoholics. You'll probably be in some type of mischief because trouble breeds trouble. But I don't believe a person should die in their own home. And I do believe the police did not announce themselves. I'm thinking that just from what I'm hearing in this report, these jailhouse conversations and the fact that that guy just took out that gun to shoot, knowing he would normally shoot at the police, knowing he would risk the life of this young girl. I just find it hard to believe that a person, a guy visiting someone else's home, hear that the police is outside and would go get a gun and shoot once the door fell down, not taking any regard for the young lady standing beside him. And then there's the rumors of were they in the hallway, were they in the bedroom? The jailhouse conversations from Glover says she was in the hallway when she died. That the guy took off and ran and hid. I don't know. Because as I state, I wasn't there. So I would like to know, were they both in the hallway or not? But I do believe he shot at the cop. The cop returned fire. And Miss Brianna took the hits. It is sad and it's shameful. That. Right now in this country. Any story pertaining to an African American. In a negative light. Such as a murder. Be it by our own race. A white person. Or the police. The most ugliest of things have been said about us as African-American people. And I'm sick of hearing the ugly stories that every city ran by a Democrat that's been brought up pertaining to black crime. Is this, is that, nothing but crime. Well, let me enlighten some of you white people out here. Some of you blacks too. I live in a Republican state, a red state, and there's nothing but pills and meth running amok Hell, right around the corner from me, down the sidewalk. Yeah, in a Republican state, Tennessee. People get high in rural America. People get high in this state. 
and people commit crimes in this state and other red states. So therefore, who are you blaming? Because all these crimes are not committed by African-American people. And in rural America, you rarely have black people living in those said towns and communities. So therefore, the people who are being robbed, shot, murdered, tortured, they are not by African-American people. They are by white people. But we get all the jokes and the hard comments, harsh comments, foul comments, because you hear the stories of Chicago crime, L.A., Miami, things like that, bigger cities, and all people focus on is, oh, it's a Democrat city. That's why they have all this crime, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you ever did your homework, Chicago was filled with crime in the 20s and 30s when the mob ran the city, such as New York. And those crimes were committed by Italians, not African-American people. And the victims were Italian, Irish, if you know your homework. So you see, what people cry and moan about is just a product of what has been going on for 400 years. Slavery, no rights for the African American people. We have turned on ourselves. We have turned on the world. But we are a product of how we've been treated. So when you white people, some of you black suit, you sit up on your high horses and you judge what is going on in the black communities as far as crime. What you should think about is how we got to that place. How we got to that place of black on black crime. Because it didn't happen overnight. It was a slow, gradual process. And I throw this in here. Because I keep hearing these ugly comments about Democrat, Democrat Democrat-ran cities with high crime, black crime. And every time something happens with an African-American in this country, I hear the worst, nastiest comments out of white people's mouths about why we're not fighting for black lives, being murdered by other black people. Whoever said we were happy that black people are killing black people? We're not. But we're sure as hell not happy with white people killing us, nor cops killing us. It's a shame where we are today, but it's no surprise. I don't see racism ending because one thing about the situation is you can't change a person's mindset. So it will go on. People have been hating people since the day man and woman were created in the garden, ran and hid. They begat children, brother against brother, and that was thousands of years ago. So let's be truthful. Different tribes and people hated each other then. It is now 2020, and people don't like each other. They don't like their own friends. They don't like their own family, their neighbors, their bosses, government, political affiliations. So why in the hell would it change? Because people are people. People are evil. People are bitter. But know this, not one of you is perfect. We all have done and said shameful things. We all have ran with the wrong kinds of people. People who were doing wrong and illegal things. We also partook in those said things. And hopefully somewhere down the road we learned our lesson and changed. And we also have the right to redeem ourselves from wrongdoing. And that's my message today. Is that Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and so many other African American deaths should not be in vain. These people were human. No matter what you thought of them, think of them, whatever you heard about them, it is not our job to be judge and jury. It is not our job to stand in and think it's okay for the police to gun down. American civilians, African-American civilians, whether it's in their house or on the street. It is the judge's job to say, this is your punishment for the said crime, and this is the proof we have against you for the said crime. It is not someone's job to kill us in our home, murder us on the street. It's not our job. 
And if you think it's okay for a black man to be murdered on the street because he was allegedly high or passed a $20 bill or a woman was in her own home and you later find out, oh, she was hanging with drug dealers, blah, blah, blah. Come on now. Anyone can be arrested. Anyone can be sent to the wrong house to execute a warrant. Announce yourself before you kick the door in. So that way, shouldn't be a problem with if someone decided to return fire. You can say, I didn't announce myself. Here is the audio footage on my camera to show we did announce ourselves. And that's another thing. I haven't heard anything about the audio of that said night. This is a shameful situation. And those of you who are saying such ugly things about Breonna Taylor, have mercy on you. Because a lot of you are no different than that young lady. And you have done some foul and rank shit in your time. It just hasn't been aired on national news. Bottom line. That's my message today. Prayers to Breonna Taylor's family. Prayers for this situation. And prayers for Mr. Glover. And Mr. Walker, Mr. Glover, I hope you have learned a lesson that, yes, obviously the police were after you, looking for you, and Brianna dealing with you. It's the price she paid that day, plus Mr. Kenneth returning fire, which most people would have done that if they had a gun and was a legal carrier. We all need to quit passing blame on who did what on that fateful night. I hope that you will learn something from this situation, being in the street. It's not a good way to live your life. Because as you see, it can be short-lived. Whether you are the wrongdoer or you are affiliated with the wrongdoer. You all stay safe out there. Like, share, subscribe, drop your comments below. This is Everyday Shenanigans. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.